Welcome to another software architecture video. My name is Mario. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you the health check pattern. The health check pattern consists of implementing a way to expose the health of our service to indicate if everything is performing correctly. In the case of web services, this is typically done by implementing an endpoint that exposes that information. In that endpoint, we have to check what is needed to perform correctly, like connections to our services, like data stores, local resources like CPU or memory, or other logic applicable to the service. This is a form of monitoring, but not only that, it's also a way to determine for a load balancer what instances should handle requests, ignoring those that at the moment are not working as expected. This health API is periodically called by those health check clients. As you may see already, this health check pattern is heavily used in cloud environments, and in the end, it's related to three non-functional requirements or quality attributes. Observability, because we can get details regarding running instances. Availability, because it lets you detect unhealthy instances that need to be replaced. And elasticity, because when scaling out, we can determine if those new instances are ready to be used. Let's look at an example of implementing the health check pattern using gRPC. As usual, the link to the code will be in the description of this video, so feel free to check it out. I'm going to be starting by updating this file, the server itself. What I'm going to be doing is just moving a few lines of the code because this is going to be important in a moment. So let's call user server. And I'm going to define a new call or no, a new variable called user server right here. So really nothing changed. If I compile this again and look at the result which is done here, everything worked as expected. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. So, what I'm going to be doing next is implementing the gRPC health protocol that already is already implemented by a package that is included also in, G in the gRPC Go implementation. For doing that, I'm going to be importing a package called called gRPC health, gRPC health v1, and gRPC health v1 as well. Actually, this is duplicated. Yep, we, we, we can clean that up in a moment. So PB, get rid of that, move this up and, and whatnot. So what I'm doing right here is implementing these three packages, or rather these two packages, well, yeah, these three packages uh, that implement the protocol that is implementing in a protocol buffer. I will show you the actual implementation of that protocol buffer in a moment. What com comes next is to instantiate a new health server, which is the one implementing the actual server logic. This is new server. And for now, so everything is compiling as expected, we're going to register the server with the health server gRPC, which is, if you remember, is right here. So health pv register health server gRPC server again, and health server. So, so far, everything seems to be working. If I save it, all my, my packages are still right there. And more importantly, if I run this and compile it, you will notice that, again, the result is already there. Oopsie. Okay. So, what comes next? What comes next is actually implementing the logic that we need for adding the health check to our server that implements gRPC. For doing that, we're going to refer back to this health server and we're going to be calling a function called health server set serving status. And what serving status does is indicates if the service, the gRPC service, remember, in this case will be the user service, it's working, it's valid and it can be used. It, this is the actual health check pattern. So for that, there's a health PB, which is referring to the package that we have above. There's a health check response underscores serving, serving, that indicates that the package is serving. Again, compiling, everything is fine. And more importantly, the way gRPC is asking us to implement this health check pattern is by also calling the name of the service that we implemented before, which will be user PB, user service service desk service name now this is a long thing let me let's check if we compile yes it does and one thing that you want to remember and check is that this actual name that is right here is actually coming let's go back to this from this variable that defines the name of our service 
which if you remember when we define the user protocol buffer the service proto is actually right here so in this case will be user v1 which will be this user v1 plus the name which in this case will be user service really cool right now that we know where this is coming from if we compile you will see that everything is working out what comes next is actually use it in somewhere so if i run this will be run example server so one way to test this is installing a binary called grpc right here so we call this we copy all this command we go somewhere we install it and the binary will be called grpc health probe so it's right there so if we test it we can do an um, an address path uh, hostname and port and run the service that will indicate all of them are serving now what we just have is use a way to indicate that the services are running but we are not actually checking anything if you remember what i was saying in the beginning you will recall that hey we need to check the things that are applicable to our service like maybe data stores connection to data stores maybe the cpu memory some other uh, logic that is applicable to the only to the service in particular so in this case we're only setting that is you know is serving but how do you go about implementing the actual logic that updates these flags, these serving statuses, and does something with it. Well, in gRPC, one way to do it would be to define a go routine. So you will call it like this, that is constantly checking using an infinite of a four that sleeps every one second. So time second. So what we're going to be doing is doing something here that checks if user service is valid what would be that well again like i said it depends on the actual service implementation and the logic that we have for now let's just keep it simple i'm going to copy this and i'm going to be doing a if time dot now dot unix dot second mod to equal zero then we're going to make it not serving not serving so actually let me do one more thing let me clean it up and define this as a status and right here move it to a status serving sort of like a small refactor so we don't have to call the same the function twice you just call it once with the status value so this compiles okay the indicator says that everything is fine and then one thing that i want to say again is that the actual testing of the whole check pattern the actual check pattern is this go routine when we're implementing an http endpoint check it's easier because you have to indicate the endpoint that is could be maybe a slash status slash health that does something similar it returns 200 or maybe 500 depending on on what result that you're getting from your checking now that we have this, how can we check this one more time? We run it again. Is doing stuff, but what is going to happen now is if I run this, I'm going to be getting from time to time a service error. I need to indicate that will be user. Oops, user service error. You see, it's not serving. It's not serving. But in one moment, it will be serving because in this logic that we implemented before which is inside the go routine you will notice that now like i said it's doing that check validating the things that we need to validate for making sure the service is available if i change it and say you know what i want to make it applicable to all the services i just go ahead and remove this and rerun the, the thing and again it's running i run this one more time let me run it without the service and you will see that now I miss a quote. It's serving, it's not serving. It's serving, not serving. And so on so forth. I think you get the idea. And really, that's it. This is the health check pattern. Really simple, but really useful when building microservices or anything that requires or uses some cloud environment that it's most likely everybody's using nowadays. Anyways, the links are in the description. Feel free to check that out. And as usual, take care and stay safe. I'll talk to you next time. See you.